Hello, YouTubers. This is Hammy Tech, Hammy Technoid here, and today's video is uh, it's a little bit of an experiment I wanted to do, and this was inspired by a fellow YouTuber. I want to give a shout out to Techmoan. That's his that's his channel. He's a British chap, and uh, and uh, he had an interesting uh, video about the DBX disc. And that is where we're going with uh, this video today. What I've done, okay, and this is the experiment part. I didn't, ha I don't have a record player in my a green screen man cave. So what I thought was, well, let's uh, let's experiment and see if I can record a DBX disc, which is this one here, the Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Um, if I can record this DBX disc onto a compact disc, onto a CD, and in its encoded form, and then play it back with the encoder, the decoder, I mean, the, the DBX224 decoder, will it sound the same as if it's just being played on the record player? And you will find that at the end of this, uh, you will be able to make a uh, summation of the results. But uh, yeah, what I want to do is just explain a little bit about the DBX disc. It was a uh, it was a disc uh, LP, a vinyl LP that uh, DBX came out with back in the late 70s, early 80s. And uh, the reason they never really caught on is because you needed to decode them with a decoder and you just couldn't put them on your record player and play them like a regular record. You had to decode it. So and the decoders were a little pricey at the time, you know, a couple hundred dollars. But the benefit of getting the decoder and playing the record was like having the master tape in your possession because they went to great lengths. The studios that recruit re produced these records went to great lengths to make them perfect. They had the master tapes and some some of the studios, I even understand, they recorded the records at half speed so that the needle would undulate better, you know, and all the, the groove would be deep and, and perfect and all that. So what I've got here, I've got a few images of a disc that I have. I have the Blood, Sweat, and Tears disc that was a DBX encoded disc. Uh, it's the only one I ever bought, and I bought it when I was uh, stationed at Omaha, okay, and I got it from a little shop, and back then, the DBX discs were a little bit pricey for what regular discs went for, you know, a normal disc was about $6, you know, but this DBX disc I got here was $18.95, Okay, so the records were more expensive and you needed to get a decoder. So that was that two strikes against them now. Okay, so anyway, I got the record, I got the decoder, and then I, you know, played it and put it away because, you know, it's a DBX disc and you just play it to listen and put it away. So I, I think I maybe played it three times, okay? And then counting the time I recorded it this time, that would be like four times I played it. So it's a very pristine record, a very good record. I've only played it with my really good sure needle, the M97 AHHE, whatever. Um, it's a very good needle. So to get to the meat of this video, I'm showing you images here of the disc and the different logos and the side of the record that I got. And you can see the studio technicians there. They're going to great lengths to produce this record. They're you know, looking at it and setting the levels and all that. But it is a process that they, they, they wanted to perfect because the DBX disc was kind of a, you know, a sideline disc. And plus, it was competing at the time. It was starting to compete with compact discs, which were, were digital. Okay. And back in the day, the big thing about digital was, oh, perfect sound. No noise, no hiss, perfect sound. Okay. So, yeah, the DBX disc uh, promised that in a way because uh, if, you have, if it's a disc, you can get a scratch on it and you can hear the tick and the pop. But um, if you play it and it's clean, it, it, it rivals the master tape. So um, w what I did is I, I recorded the disc directly onto a CD, okay? And it is a direct copy, a direct transfer. There's no decoding on the CD. It is as if it was the record, 
Okay, so I took the CD and I took it into my man cave, hooked it into the CD player I have in there, and then I hooked the encoder, decoder, to the output of the CD player. And now when I hit the DBX button on the DBX, it will decode it as if it was a DBX record. And you will hear the difference in my demo here. And I'm going long-winded here, so I don't want to take too much time. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go to the section where I played it, and you will see. Okay? In this part of the demo, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the DBX encoded music which I have recorded onto a CD which I showed you a picture of before um, and the CD has the same information on it as the record uh, it was encoded in 16-bit uh, uh, 44k so when I play the CD through the DBX de uh, decoder it will be playing as if it was playing the record so I'm going to play it with the normal now with the DBX encoder turned on and you will hear the music as it should sound so here goes. And that's all I'm going to play of that part because I don't want to get flagged by uh, YouTube. So now I'm going to turn off the DBX. Okay, and that didn't focus very well, but I turned off the DBX there. So now I'm going to rewind and start that part of the music over again. And you can hear the difference. The sound with the unencoded music is very brash and, and yeah, very tinny. So, yeah, it is very important to, to know that if you have a DBX disc, it must be decoded for it to sound right. It's not going to hurt your equipment. It'll just sound terrible. So that was, this is basically my demonstration I wanted to get today. And uh, the interesting part was that regardless if you're playing the disc, or you're playing the disc that was recorded onto another medium, say a CD or a tape, you still can play it through a DBX decoder and get the same result. So this is the end of my video. I'm going to sh sign off now. And thank you for watching. And until later, goodbye.